Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title is that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Um, welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your mindfulness coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. And today it is a great day. We have a special guest um, from a totally different country. I've never been there. It's on my bucket list. <laughs> uh, she's an amazing, is you heard that laugh? She's an amazing person. We spend the first 10 to 15 minutes get to know her. Um, it's a beautiful thing about internet. People can be international. You can have a conversation. So welcome to a Life's a Shuffle episode, Neil Connor. Kind of tell our guests uh, a brief description about yourself and where you're from. So hello everyone, my name is Mia O'Connell and if you can't tell by the accent, I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. <laughs> I'm an international student here currently at a university in Miami. Um, I'm studying marketing um, and I love it here so far. Um, I recently started a motivational series called Elevate with Mia. And a part of that is just my passion for personal development. And I love helping young people, um, you know, from I was in high school, I was a student counselor and all those things. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Well, Mia, I love the accent, first of all. <laughs> and, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> and and what like what Ron was saying, Jamaica is one of the countries that in my bucket list. And I think we had this conversation that it could be if possible, if things goes well next year is my plan. So hopefully um, you can Ooh. give me some tips and places to check out um, <laughs> in the country. I would love to. I, of course, whenever you're planning on going, just reach out to me. But you see, the thing is, <laughs> Corona. <laughs> I know. So, you know, a lot of people are, are visiting, you know, this year and, and and they have visited last year since Corona. But I think that the experience, you know, Jamaica is such a fun and an open place. But, you know, with Corona, there's so many restrictions that the experience is just not the same. I, so I, I would always suggest to wait a little when things calm down um, and then you can go. And it's so fun. If you've never been to Jamaica, I encourage you to go take a trip, go on different scenes. And you don't have to do the hotel um, route. You can always do the villa. You can you can book a villa via you know, Airbnb or however you want to truly experience experience the country. Oh, yeah. I can't Beautiful. wait. Yeah, it's, it was um, this movie. I don't know if you've heard of this movie called How Stella Got Her Groove Back. So after that yeah, movie, that. yeah, after that movie, I said, I'm going there. <laughs> I'm, was it shot in Jamaica? Um, I believe it was, yes. And that's why I said, I'm going to be going there. That's where it's, you know, I want to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. And I, I have a question for you. When, um, how long ago or when did you move here or when did you come here to America? Okay, so I'll give you the backstory. 
backstory. <laughs> yes, that's what I was waiting for, the meat. <laughs> yes, I'll give you the backstory. All right, so growing up, um, I was never the brightest student. I was, you know, I, I made my laziness get the best of me. <laughs> and I never always had a lot of confidence. Which, which was a problem for me. And so it affected my schoolwork. Um, and I, I had to do multiple different extra lessons and um, just trying to catch up. But, you know, fast forwarding to college years, my mother is actually one of the reasons why I decided to study abroad. I, I was in, in, in Jamaica, you do these Caribbean exams in 11th grade, where we call it grade 11, we do something called CXC. And then in we have grade 12 and 13, which is comp- which is um, it's not compulsory. So you can choose whether or not you want to do it. So I chose to do grade 12. And I know they have 12th grade here in the US, but we have an extra year called grade 13. And so you do advanced level Caribbean exams and they call them, it's called CAPE. So in grade 12, my, um, you know, I had my mind set on just going to the university in Jamaica. It's called the University of the West Indies, the Mona Campus. It's one of the biggest universities in the Caribbean. So I just wanted to go there, do marketing and, you know, be merry. My mother, you know, she was like, Mia, you're really limiting yourself. Um, and I think in sixth form, that's what we call it. So in lower six, which is grade 12. I started to, you know, find myself and, and want to enjoy and become more involved. And I could tell that my mother was very proud of me at this stage in my life. And she said, Mia, you know, expand your horizon. Um, go on, do something different. And I said, All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna um expand my options. And so I decided to go to SAT, uh, not go to SAT, I'm sorry. I decided to go to SAT classes. Um Every day I went to SAT classes, I was so upset <laughs> um, mm-hmm. because it's like, I don't want to be here. These classes are very hard. Um, the math, the math was very hard because it, it, it was things that we don't learn um, in class, in our regular curriculum in, in high school every day. You know, remember that this is not a American written syllabus. And so the math for this, for the SAT is, it's that yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, it's like high level algebra and all those things where in Jamaica we call those um there's a class for it where they say you should do add math, which is additional math, it's higher level mathematics, and a lot of that is reflected on the SAT math exam. I'm already bad at regular math. <laughs> <laughs> and so I used to just be so miserable going to that class. Um and I was like, man, why am my mother <laughs> making me do this? But, you know, I did it. I love the English. Um, I, I've always been good at English. And I just toughed it out. Um, I ended up doing okay. And then I was unlike my other parents who was like, oh, I want to go to this school. I want to go to that school. And I have to go here. I have to go there. No. I signed up with a college consultancy firm and we worked together chose some schools I was not picky um and then it, you know I got into a couple of schools um I did a couple of school tours during the Christmas because I, I would have applied during November I think that was the early appli- the early application deadline was I think November the 1st if I'm not mistaken and then I, I felt like when I toured Barry Barry was one of the last schools I toured and I just fell in love with the campus felt like home um they answered some of my questions so perfect and I was like this is where I want to be um and so I would just say me being here was a risk that I took it was definitely out of my comfort zone and I believe this all happened in I think 2018 I think it's 2018 right because I'm I'm my third year now and so the journey has just been amazing I've been so involved on campus I'm a orientation leader um i was a peer mentor where you had i had to partake in a leadership um, certification program here on campus called emerging leaders program and then from that um, the next year i was able to be a peer mentor 
And so I was assigned four mentees. Um, and we'd meet once weekly and converse. And then, you know, that led me next to being a resident assistant, which is a big job on campus because it's very competitive. And so I'm really in my element here on campus. And when I look back, I don't regret being here at all. And I thank my mother again for pushing me in this direction. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, are you the only child? Um, not anymore. <laughs> okay. I have a brother and he's 10 years old. Mm. So you're the oldest then? Yes, I'm the okay. oldest. So when I, he I hear you telling your story, um, it's really beautiful. And um, what I heard, and I just, I just hear your voice vibration goes up and go down. What I mean by that is that one minute I hear you say, I, I face a lot of difficulties, my confidence, my self-esteem is low. Mm -hmm. But once you put, let's say, your mind to accomplishing something or your mom pushing you something, your elevation of your voice went up. So it's like, you no, know, monotone, then when I went happy, it's like, okay, phew, I think I can do this, but now I can. So with that being said, how's your confidence now and self-esteem knowing that you accomplish a lot of different things? That's an interesting question because... Um, I'll take you back again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the future, I love that. <laughs> yeah. So I'll take you back to another story. So before I even, so I remember I explained that in the Caribbean, we do these exams in 11th grade, um, AKA grade 11 called CXC. Um, and I, and, and I mentioned that I was never great at math. So in grade 10, which is what we call fourth form, um, Many students have the option of doing, you know, a couple of the exams early because you have to sit at, you know, the average students will sit between six to eight exams um, in fifth form, grade 11. And so, you, you know, you kind of want to take the load off, you know, off your plate. But my mother again, <laughs> <laughs> in fourth form, she said, do, do math and English early. And I'm like, what? Like I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm already not good at math. You know, I'm, I'm good with English, but still like, why do I have to do this early? Like, I think I need more time before I'm, and a, a funny story. My mother was abroad, you know, her sister was having a baby and I was in Jamaica and she called me and said, Mia, look, the deadline is coming up. If you're going to do this exam, you need to make me pay for the exam because you have to, you have to pay to sit the exam. Um, and the deadline is coming up. Are you going to take this exam? And I said, mommy, no, I'm not because I'm not good. And I don't want you to waste your money. Man, did I get a proper cussing? <laughs> 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 I got a proper cussing about how lazy I was. And oh, I don't, I don't want to do anything. And she's like, you know what? I'm paying for the exam and you're going to sit it. So again, I thank my mom because... Um, I went to the extra lessons, um, you know, I had to go to external extra lessons now to prepare for these exams early. And they, one of the ladies that, one of the ladies that own the actual company, she's a, I think she's a psychologist, if I'm not mistaken. And she said to my mother, you know, because we, we would, I would have conversations with her, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure if I'm ready, you know. And she said to my mother that she assessed me through conversation and that she can see that I have confidence vision. Mm. And she wasn't lying because it's not a thing where I couldn't do it, but I kind of told myself that I can't. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes, I, now that I look back, I recognize that sometimes we limit ourselves. And it's not that we can't do something, but that we tell ourselves that we can't and we won't. And so we, we, we block out any opportunity, you know, we, we, block out, we block out working on ourselves to achieve these goals. And, um, you know, she had, thankfully, the, the extra lessons was able to get different people to tutor us. And, and she pulled me out and carried me into like one-on-one -on -one classes with different students. And then, you know, when the exam time came, I got, I got 
top marks. So, you know, they grade them like one, we call them grades one, two, and three. So one is like an A. And I got A in both English and math. And I was like, what, me? <laughs> and I cried. I cried when I got my results, you know. To some people, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I got my one in, in English and math. But to me, it meant everything. And my mother said, you know, I told you, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember I, yeah, when I got those results, man, I was crying, crying. My grandfather said, my grandpa looked at me and said, did somebody die? <laughs> I was like, no, grandpa. I got my results. Um, it was lots of excitement in the house. Um, but, but Ron, I know you asked me, you know, am I confident now? Uh, and that's the funny part is that a lot of times throughout my life, different events I've wowed myself, but I don't think I give myself enough credit. And sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm still struggling with confidence, even though I'm accomplishing so many things. Sometimes I feel like, like I could do better, mm-hmm. even when I'm doing my best. And I, I, I'm my biggest critic. I constantly criticize the things I do, the things I say, you know. But, but I'm, I'm in the process of becoming way more confident. And, and um, I, I just say it's a work in progress. I'm not at where I want to be with my confidence level, but it's definitely a work in progress. And Nia, you're way ahead of a lot of people at your age right now. <laughs> you really, you're way ahead of me at your age. Trust me. Yeah, you really are. And, you know, and this is why, um, you know, I'm so glad to have been connected with you because it's, you're an inspiring to so many people, like a lot of people your age and a lot of the younger crowd right now, because at this age, it, it is, it's normal not to have that kind of, not to be confident in themselves and we are the biggest critics on ourselves too i mean at at our age my age you know i i still lack confidence and it it comes up all the time but you know and so you know that and that's normal but you're able to change that and you're able to shift that and you know look at look at all these things that you've accomplished um because a lot of the times we do limit ourselves and we do doubt ourselves and we question ourselves if we can do it or not and again that's that's normal so one of the things is that you wouldn't know unless you actually try it and you did it right and your mom's right so you know you got to listen to your mama (laughs) (laughs) mama's knows best Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's what she said (laughs) when i hear your story i can't help but um um, hear my story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm 37 and you're 20. So you're a 70 year difference. It took me up until the age of between 34 to 35 when I had a, a, a psychological, emotional breakdown. I forget the physical. All right. Physical is always my crutch as far as I compete in a lot of competition. So my idea was at the time, if I get my body stronger, my mind becomes stronger. Right. It's actually the opposite. I was nothing but an egg. So outside I'm hard, but inside I'm very soft. So I could just crack the outside and boom, all the liquids come out. The a diuretic thing, when I'm hearing your story, I see my story. But more importantly, one question, if you ever have the time, I would ask your mom, is your mom saw something you did not see? So you be be. I would love to ask her, so what did you see in Nia that Nia did not see in herself would be the question if you ever ask your mom that. Mm -hmm. The thing to to realize is that we're not taught confidence, right? We're we're taught the exterior idea of confidence. Let's say, okay, let's take social media, for example. You see a lot of pages out there, let's say, with people with the fancy cars, you know, they got the Rolls Royce, Lamborghini, they got, you know, the money, right? They got the power. They have a million or 10 million followers. So the idea is, oh, well, that person's prestige is because they have exactly the things that people appreciate. But when we talk to those people, they're just a minion because they themselves don't have the confidence. They're just doing things because that has given them success, which is right. But the success comes from within. So the, the other question I want to ask you, now this is for you, is how does Nia view herself and how does Nia want to view herself? So one is present and one is in the future. 
<laughs> okay, so <laughs> <laughs> did I get you? <laughs> <laughs> so from okay, I would say I started to discover my strength um after eleventh grade. Um, once I started conquering things that I didn't deem possible, for example, I'll take it back again, <laughs> Spanish. Yeah, at my high school, you had to do a language. And it was either Spanish or French. Um, and I've been doing Spanish all my life, from kindergarten all the way up. But I've never loved Spanish, and I've never been able to truly learn and understand Spanish. But the exams were coming up. And for the Caribbean Spanish exam, you have to write an essay in Spanish. You have to do a listening um, comprehension part. You have to do a reading comprehension part and all of that. So I needed to know Spanish. At this point, the exams are coming up in about five months and I only know hola, como estas? <laughs> right? B&E too, right? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. But my mother again. <laughs> <laughs> Not even my mother really, but, I, you know, in, in the educational system, it's so good when you have teachers that believe in you. My Spanish teacher, I'll, I'll never forget Miss Clark. She said to me, she can see the potential, but I have to see it too. And that um, don't give up on myself. Don't give up on this exam and go and get extra classes. Because she said, all you need is some extra classes. So, of course, I said no. And like, it's, it's whatever, you know, just this lackadaisical attitude. And then I came home that day and my mother was on the stairs and I was talking. She was sitting on the, on the stairs at home and I was talking to her and she was like, yeah, you're really going to fail this exam? I was like, like you know, mommy, what am I going to do? And so we decided to sign up for an extra class. You know, I took Miss Clark's um, advice. And at first, the first tutor I went to was so expensive. Honestly, I, it was really expensive. And I knew I wasn't going to be able to continue that class. And, <clears throat> sorry, and then um, in that same office where... Where, or, or, or rather, I should say that same school, because it was a, it was called a language learning school. There was a tutor there that had a marathon, and I went to the marathon, and she said, "Why don't you come to my extra class?" You know, I, I'm cheaper. And then it turned out she was not just cheaper; she lived right next to me. You know, she was from Cuba, and she lit. I I would say I went to Spanish boot camp. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and what I didn't learn in all my years, I learned it in three months. And to this day, that just doing that, you know, going through all of that, those three months, and learn, when I say I love Spanish now, I mean, I love Spanish, I know Spanish, you know, not fluent, because with Spanish, you have to practice to keep on remembering. But when I tell you at the time, my brother knew more Spanish than me, and he was probably six. Um, and I moved to a place where I'm just speaking pure Spanish in the house. It was three months. Rigor was rigor was wow. rigor was training of, of Spanish. Um, look, that lady really helped me, and it just showed me that it's not that I I, I couldn't do it, but it's just that some sometimes you need help. Sometimes there are just things that you can't do on your own. And just sitting down, you know, saying, oh, I can't do it or I don't know how, it doesn't help. You have to take action. You have to, if you want to change, you have to get up and do something different. And that really helped me. And that was just a part of showing me where my true potential lies. You know, I am capable of doing anything. But, you know, I know people are tired of hearing this, but it really does start with the mindset. It really does. It really does start with you saying, I can and I will. And um, so to answer your question, Ron, from, you know, from just those days, from fifth form, grade 11, I started to call myself a lion. <laughs> I, started <to> <laughs> <say> <laughs> I started to say that I am, uh, you know, I am strong. I am bold. And, 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 and just by those little things, you know, saying I'm a lion. 
hear me roar. <laughs> yes, to hear me roar. And I, I've just been roaring ever since, you know. Wow. And my future self, I just want to see myself, I see myself being more confident. And I see myself conquering so much more. The sky's the limit. And even with my uh, motivational series Elevate with Mia, I, I, am, I am achieving things that I never thought I would have been able to do. Um, as I explained earlier in our early conversation before we started, you know, yesterday I had to interview someone. I've never interviewed anyone ever. You know, do I know exactly what I'm doing? Am I an expert? You know, have I done this before? No. But am I doing it anyway? Yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I would say that's a lion in me. I'm a lion at this point. <laughs> <laughs> How does all that feel, Nia? Like just what you're saying right now and the way that the way you're talking about it, I just feel so much passion in you. Right. I am. Um, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling somewhat accomplished. I'm feeling like I'm getting somewhere. You know, I'm taking it step by step, day by day. It isn't easy. You know, again, if for any international student who's listening, you know, the international student struggle is real. It's not it's, it's not it's not necessarily easy, but you have to take it day by day. You have to, you know, set goals for yourself and try to achieve them, you know, one at a time. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine, I mean, for others also listening here, <clears throat> like Nia, moving from a different country to here. It's a totally different culture for, from where you came from. And mm-hmm. you have to adjust to that. And it, that alone is a struggle. Yes. Um, tell us what, was, what that was like. So, um, well, luckily for me, I was always traveling. You know, I've, I've traveled for many years from I was a little girl, from, you know, as one. Um, so America, you know, Miami, Fort Lauderdale area, it wasn't a brand new place for me. And so I kind of knew what the culture was like here and, you know, watch TV, watch different shows. Mm-hmm. But to visit here is so much different than to actually reside here and go to school here and not hop on a plane, you know, one month later or, or two weeks later. Um, the food was different. The people were different. The things that you can say, the, you know, the slang. At first, when I came up here, um, getting used to the accents, you know. You know, I hear it every now and then, you know, on TV or when you travel. But to, ha- to hear the, ac- the accent constantly, sometimes I didn't understand certain things. And then my friends would say <clears throat> different slangs that I, I never understood or... Um, just different little things, but for the most part, being away from, from my parents, I've never been away from my parents for so long. And, and that took a toll on me in the beginning. And it still does, but, you know, with time, it gets a little easier. But I would definitely say being away from home, you know, the food. I, 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 and you're going to hear me mention food a lot. Because... <laughs> you love food. That's fine. <laughs> we all love food. I'm a foodie. <laughs> I'm a foodie, you know, every time my daddy calls me on FaceTime, he's like, you're always eating something. <laughs> right. But, you know, that was a, that was a huge difference for me. Um, but, but you know, with time, with time you adjust. Yeah. You know, you recognize hey, this is my new circumstances and you just have to, you just have to adjust. And there's a lot of learning process through this too. Um, you know, the experiences that you're facing and that you face from the beginning to where you are now, all that, it's you you were learning. The experiences that you went through, it's a learning process from you for you. And this is something that you can go back to later on. And just when you tell your story, you have a story to tell. I mean, in fact, you already have a story to tell right now, you know, with this journey that you're in and just just look how far you've come already at in the last couple of years that you've been here. Right. You know what? Before um, I, I, want, I hear your story and I hear that you turned to lion. <laughs> it, it's really fundamental that you, you got to congratulate yourself at that point. Right. You chose to at that point rewrite your story. So your story could have been, 
I'm Nia. I'm not good at math. I'm not good at Spanish. I come from Jamaica. I don't know what I'm going to do in my life. You know what? Whatever happens, you know what? It's God, right? And, and it, our source or universe. And I'm just going to be that person because I'm not good at anything. So that's going to be a failure. That is the story you're writing. But at some point in your life, it could have been your mom, the psychologist, or just an awakening moment where you said, damn it, Nia's a lion. I, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And that's where you start to not only rewrite your story, but you decide to co-create your life within. And that's a lot of things that someone's 20 years old. I didn't know that until like a year ago. Okay. So I'm like 36, but to learn it earlier in life and the, the, the willingness to say, I can co-create my life through my mindset is huge. And you got to, got to congratulate yourself, hat on the back. Whatever it takes to celebrate that, I want to celebrate that with you because you decide to co-create your life. And that's huge because this like, uh, what's his name? Not Tom Ford. It's a cologne. Uh, what's his name? The Ford dude. <laughs> or, 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 or Dale Carnegie. One of those guys. Okay. <laughs> he says, when you think you can, I think it's probably Roosevelt said it, but when we think you can, you can. We think you can't, you're usually right. So we can, you can, and we can't, you can't because- Either one, you've already thought it, and you quote so that write your story. But someone out there that's listens to podcasts will correct me. I hope they do. It doesn't matter because I got the concept. <laughs> yeah, Nia. I mean, as you can see, we can't stress enough of how much you know, how highly we think of you know your your progress and just what you've gone through at such a young age. Because even for us adults, we're still going through the process of changing. You know, um, and there's a lot of things that we didn't realize up until about just a few years ago. And we're so much older than you. I, I could be your mom. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I really could. And it, it's just, it's so crazy, you know, and I want to know besides having your mom pushing you and seeing something in you, but what was it about you that you did it? Okay, so as Ron said earlier about, you know, rewriting your story, mm -hmm. that was big for me. Um, from I was about, I would say, 14, I started doing nails. Um, you know, I, I did my friend's nails. I, I watched a lot of YouTube. I, I love doing nails. I'm, that, you know, I'm very passionate about nails and nail design and artistry. And every summer and every Christmas, I just keep working, working, working on it. And eventually, the better I became, the more I recognized I want to do something with this in the future. And I always say I want to create my own nail empire, you know, just like Essie. Mm -hmm. A multi-million, billion dollar <laughs> yeah. company for nails and, and everything nails. But, and, you know, as I said, I started to discover myself later on in high school. But one thing I knew that it, if I wanted to get to that big place, I could not continue the way I was continuing before. And um, I just knew I had to change. I knew I had to get myself together. And, you know, apart from me knowing that, I think it came naturally with time. And it came naturally as I started to mature and as I got my priorities straight. Because, you know, when you're young, like what Oprah would say, you know, you, when you know better, you'll do better. And so as I started to know better, I started to do better. Mm. And so it was just constant change, constant change. But what kept me driven was the fact that I knew where I wanted to go, which was amazing places and impacting others and, and being a successful businesswoman. But the person I was, you know, and I know that you say you have to start training your mind from early. I knew I had to get rid of those old ways, those old habits, you know, and, and move forward in the right direction. And so I'm not perfect at it, but I'm working on it. You know, I'm a work in progress, and I think that's most important. And what 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 reassured me that I'm moving in the right direction was you know it was the the, the reassurance from my parents. You know, especially my mom. One day she said to me, you, sh you know, Nia, you're really starting to find yourself, you know, you know, in high school, I was in the tutoring club and all that. And she's like, you sure you want to leave right now? <laughs> you know, 
Are you sure you wanna? Are you sure you don't wanna go to grade thirteen and and, and keep doing you? I was like, mommy, I'm good. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I'm good. So so you know, Gloria, it's really just about me knowing, you know, identifying who I wanted to become. Yeah. But I knew that I had to start working on me to get to that place. So that's what I did. Oh, damn, Nia. I didn't think like that when I was in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I really did I don't know it. Where I really, I really don't know where I get it from. My friends like to say, you know, yeah, you're a grandma. <laughs> but, but in high school, in high school, um, you know, a lot of my friends and parents call me auntie, and it's just because I don't know. As I, as I decided, as I, um, you know, got rid of my childish ways and and started to really mature, I just became. I, I don't know how to explain it. A lot of people, you know, would come to me, confide in me, we talk. I give them advice, but that's just naturally who I was. And I was always like that, even though I wasn't as confident or even, you know, my parents would like to say I talk a lot. Now, when I was a little girl, you know, we're going, we're driving off into the country and, you know, different trips, so, you know, explore the scenery. They'd have videos. I'd be singing the whole way. I'd be talking the whole way. I'd be pretending to give tour guides. You know, it's, it's something I always love to do. I, I love people. I love helping others. Yeah. And you had, yeah, you had a lot of determination. You were really determined to reach something. You know, you had, you had dreams and you were, gosh, determined to reach those goals and that dream. And, you know, you talked about your friends telling you sometimes like you're a grandma. Did you feel any different from any of your friends? Yes. Yes, I did. Sometimes I felt like um sometimes I felt like I was boring Mm -hmm. but I don't think I was boring I was just different I was and you know I still went out and partied like a young person and all that but just the way how I think sometimes you know the things I say it just comes so naturally I I was just I I I'm different than a lot of people you know, my, my mind was in a different place. My my mind was busy elevating, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um and just so everything I said kind of reflected that. You know, I oh, in in my family, my family has a lot of I don't want to use the word old, but let's say older mm-hmm. people than me. And so I hang out with my family a lot. Um and the older members of my family, and so they provide me with a lot of wisdom and knowledge. Old soul. Yeah, old soul. Old soul. I, that's the first time you're the first person I've ever ever said it to. So when people used to call me old soul, I hated mm-hmm. it. Like, it's like, oh, so I'm old or I'm young. <laughs> but I, I understand it more. But I, I've, now I can say it to somebody else. So you're old soul. Yes. <laughs> I'm old soul. Yeah. Yes. It's all, my, 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 my grandfather, you know, he makes, you know, I live with my, my grandfather lives with us and he always says, you know, you must spend time with your family. And he, he, that's his number one priority is spending time with family. And so I spend a lot of time with the older members of my family. And um, they provide me with so much wisdom and knowledge and so many things I take away. And so, you know, imagine as a young girl constantly growing up and talking to these older folks in her family. That's why I speak the way I speak. That's why I think the way I think, because I'm, I'm ne- I wasn't always around younger people, you know. So I was I was always kind of ahead in thinking like that, you know. Um. But yes, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why I would be classified as an old soul. Yeah, you know, you talk about elevation um, or elevating, and I heard this on um, Sadhguru. I don't know if you've heard about him. He um, talked about elevation once, and um, he mentioned elevation means you see better. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So an example with that was that if you're stuck down, you have your own issues, right? And then you see it in a certain way. But the moment you go up and then you look down, you have a different view of everything. Yeah. So I think that you you just kept going up and going up. And each time you look down, you just, maybe there's a part of you that just didn't want to be there yeah and and when you're when you when you 
start to become very ambitious mm-hmm. and you, you know where you know like I said before when you know kind of you have an idea of where you want to go you recognize that you won't get there unless you elevate you won't get there unless you, you know it's, it's up from here um and so I just knew that I had to I had to make a difference yeah you know change doesn't come from doing the same things all the time you have to do something different you have to take action and so that's that's really what I did. But, you know, in the process of it, you know, you, I can say this now because I've actually gotten somewhere. But w- when I was in the middle of it, I felt like I was in the middle of nowhere. I felt like I was just spinning. I, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know where I'm going. You know, even just to choose a major, I was I didn't even know, you know, what I want to do. And I still don't know what I want to do, even though I'm studying marketing. But I'm just trying to figure it out day by day and I kind of I I like Steve Jobs quote where he said you know we can't connect the dots looking forward we can only connect connect the dots looking um, backwards and so we have to trust that one day our dots will align you know in accordance with our future so I'm just trying to trust the dots right now (laughs) wow you trust the process process. yeah yeah it's um it's a study of uh, metaphysics mm-hmm. and um you know it's really ironic when i hear you say this kind of stuff i, I can't help but say see myself in you so i haven't said much because i'm just really <laughs> actively listening to you and what you're trying to accomplish in your story because it's really huge i mean um i've trained clients especially when i lived in california versus washington i did personal training um, a lot of my clients were not from America, most of them from India or China or somewhere, Mongolia. I even went at one guy from Mongolia. And it's the confidence. I told one client, he was from China, and he says, uh, Man, I, I don't know if I can be a leader. I don't know if I can do this. You know, I don't know how I can be, how I'm going to accomplish anything. I says, oh, Hold on, let me ask you a question. I said, You came from China. He says, Yes. And what school did you go to? He says, USC, <laughs> University of California. Then I asked him, I says, So wait a minute here. So you were able to lead yourself to come to a country you've never been to before, speak a language that's not your first language. Aren't you a leader because you're able to lead yourself? He's like, oh, my goodness. I never thought of it that way. Okay. Because most people think I have to be a manager or have manager or experience to be a leader. No, you're leading your life already because look at how much you've accomplished. You came, you had to take an audacious test to even be able to come to USC, not that because he couldn't afford to pay for it. He had to do an internship tutoring other students that are from America. Wow. You are a leader, dude. Get with the program. Yeah. But that's where, you know, when you talk about connecting dots, it's really, um, you know, creating your affirmations, which is all experiences have value, which is kind of one of mine, and trust the process. Things are happening perfectly the way they should be happening. Mm-hmm. And it's huge. I agree. So when you talk about your program, Elevate, why why did you use the word Elevate? Like, what, what's the purpose behind that one? It's funny that you, you, you ask that because, I don't, you know, I, I would say that it just, it fell into my mind. I don't know what it was. It was during, you know. I'm saying during Corona time, as if Corona isn't still around. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, um, you know, I was I was at my grandma's house. I was laying in the bed, and I've I've always thought about doing something like this, but then now I was trying to you know make it happen, and I was just thinking, what would I call it? What would I call it? What would I call? It? And then just the name Elevate with Neil came in my mind. And at first, I didn't want to use it. I was like, I need to find something else. That just sounds so cliche. But then, you know, I was like, no, 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 elevate. And we're, and, and I want to help others elevate in any way possible. And so that's why I bring different topics, you know, whether it's personal journey, whether it's educational topics about, you know, how to master interviews, any different things, because we all need to elevate. We all need to step up each, you know, each different step to get to that big goal, big goal. And so that's pretty much why I decided to call it Elevate With Me. We're elevating from whatever position we are. Because as long as we're breathing, we have room to elevate. Yes. Yeah, it is. And it could be based on your own experience because you did mention earlier that you elevate. 
Yes. So it might have, yeah, that maybe it came from within and you just, you know, it's, it's there somewhere. It's coming from you, obviously. And um, it is, you know, what you're experiencing and you wanted to share that. And just so, you know, just to let you know, Nia, you are already making an impact. You're already making a difference. You really are. Um, it is, you know, the work that you're doing and, and just, there's so much feelings and passion on this. It's, I mean, you got me, <laughs> you got me on this, you know, and even Ron, because we're so impressed by this and yeah, just you are already making an impact and making a difference. And I actually wanted to go back to one of Ron's question. Um, I know that he did ask you about how you viewed yourself and how do you view yourself in the future? I think um, I wanted to hear that also. Um, I was saying that, you know, now I'm a lion and now I, I'm just going after each goal day by day and I'm just conquering and I, and as I said earlier, when I, when I started, when I, um, added the Elevate With Me a segment about, you know, the discussion segment, you know, I've never done an interview before, but I'm living by the mantra of kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, and I'm setting different goals for myself. I'm not limiting myself anymore. I'm just going out there, trying different things. I'm doing it. I'm 20. So if I fail, you know, I'm going to try again, but I'm going to use a different plan. And then I'm just going to just keep going, keep going. You know, everyone says your 20s is the best time to try. And if you fail, you just try again, try again, try again. And I, I'm going to say this because I believe, and even with getting my resident assistant job on campus, Nothing that I've achieved in life was linear. You know, nothing was linear. Nothing was straight road, nothing. So, you know, I had to, it took me two years to get that position. And it, it ultimately is only supposed to take one. But sometimes it's not that the destination is not for us. It is just that the route that we had originally planned to go by it may just have to use a different route. But sometimes I I would like dismiss the destination and be like, okay, well, all the signs of the world is showing that I'm not supposed to be at this specific destination, but that's false. Sometimes all it takes for us is to reassess and look at the route and maybe we need a different route. Now, this is something that pilots do all the time when they have bad weather or you know, if there is traffic in the sky or something. They're going to get to that destination, <clears throat> but they just have to take a different route. And so that's something that I identified um, <clears throat> in my life. And so I'm just you know, moving forward in that way where, you know, I'm trying not to dismiss the destination, but I'm, you know, creating alternative routes and going after it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And there's, there's no limit. No limit. No Amazing. limit at all. Yeah. You, you know, um, I'm going to, uh, so you said something earlier. So you see, so right now you're basically, you're not, um, confined by any, um, how can I say this society's thought process, right? Society says you got to do X, Y, Z to get to the end. And it's not really how it's designed, right? Like I said, nothing like it's been linear. Mm -hmm. Um, what I did here earlier um, is that one day you woke up, you heard the word elevate. And um, could I share something with you, if you don't mind, something that no, may no. help maybe because you said, well, oh, elevates came to me. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> so the body has two different minds. Uh, the first one is a conscious mind and the second one is a subconscious mind. The conscious mind is, let's say, aware of logic. It's aware that, okay, I'm going to take out my smartphone. I'm a GPS to get to a destination, right? So it knows that it's aware of its surroundings. The subconscious mind is, doesn't have that awareness. It doesn't know nothing about good, bad, right, or wrong. It just knows. So the conscious mind is really controlled by a subconscious mind because it doesn't have that variable of right, wrong, good, or bad. So when you were in a state of, of happiness and a state of creativity and a state of happiness being at your grandmother's house, which you probably love your grandmother, <laughs> yeah. it's funny how the, the word elevate just happened. 
it was already in your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. It took the layer of the conscious mind to peel back so the conscious mind can, boom, pop up and say, okay, elevate, that's it. And when you had the word elevate, it's, it's really ironic. Everything started to align. You felt good. It made sense. It, you're in line with what you want to say. And then now that transfers into everything you do around you, not just you, because first elevate to start with Nia, but it also helps to recognize that the people you're interacting with are elevating you. The people you're mm-hmm. interviewing are elevating you. The people you're, you're interacting with on campus are elevating you. All the knowledge and books that you need to get to that destination is coming into your lap all of a sudden because you're in touch with that higher subconscious, or we call it in, in coaching, the higher coach of yourself. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it really does. Yeah, like everything just started happening for you. Yeah, you know, you know, let's say that when you start to think about something, the more you see it, like they say, you know, I, I love Range Rovers. <laughs> and so when I started to think about the Range Rovers more and research it, I started to see it more on the road. Um, and I think that they say it has something to do with, um, does it, is it? Is it, it doesn't have to do with something about it. That what I say, like you're, you're, you're talking about it more. So you're like looking out for it more, like un, unknowingly or something like that. Yeah. For example, Range Rovers have existed, right? Okay. I'll mm-hmm. give you a bad example. You go to a grocery store, right? You be drive, you walk. And um, the first time you get there, you're probably kind of navigating how to get there. You know, where is it at? Okay. Then you take a right turn, left turn. If you go there past maybe two or three times, you just know how to get there without even thinking about it. Right. So subconsciously, range rules have already existed, but because you're actively looking at them, actively want this, now it's showing up more and more in your life, which is your subconscious mind. Right. Because now you upload the software, be it, I love rain road, rain road, rain road, rain rover. Rover. <laughs> going on. range rovers, and I like them red, let's say. Now you told the subconscious mind has been told that. So now I realize, oh, okay. Now we're gonna make sure her conscious mind Mm -hmm. is aware of of that now. That's the difference. Right. And so with that example, I think that just that is reflected in um, all that I do with Elevate with Mia. Because at first, you know, when you have this grand idea and you're trying to put things together, nothing really makes sense in the beginning. And you're trying to think about, I'm, I was trying to think about, how am I going to get different people to participate? You know, the hows, the hows, the why, the ifs, the buts, the maybes. And then once I started, everything just started to fall in place. I started to find more people. Um, I also thank God for Clubhouse. <laughs> clubhouse made things so much easier i mean that's how gloria and i met i was moderating a room and gloria came and just all of these different things like everything started to fall fall in place everything you know the people started to show up and man i've really been blessed i've really been blessed the support has been unwavering and man i'm, I'm just so excited to see what else will come for elevate with me it will. It will. And, you know, Nia, there's many ways and there's a lot of ways how, you, you know, to do life. Sometimes you always try to figure out what am I going to do with my life? How am I going to do this life? There's so many ways. But the most important thing is how you are within yourself. And I find mm-hmm. that in you and that, you know, once you know how to be, what to do and how to do it will come naturally to you. And I think it's happening to you. Yes. Mm-hmm. It certainly is. Mm-hmm. It certainly is. So for that, how can our audiences find you um, if you, they want to be interviewed on your podcast or YouTube? Oh, by the way, I was going to say this. If you ever need more content, I will volunteer myself to be interviewed on your podcast or your YouTube channel just to help. A person up and coming because the more content they have, the more they become relevant, the more the algorithm pick up on it and so forth and so on. So if you ever need an interview, I volunteer myself. But how can our guests find you if they want to follow you in your story? Well, if they would like to follow me, you can just go over on Instagram or YouTube. Um, my name, the name is Elevate with Nia. Um, and then you can watch all the different videos on YouTube 
or you can watch some of the videos on Instagram. Originally, I started on Instagram TV. So there's a couple of videos from season one on, on Instagram TV. But for season two, it's fully on YouTube. I recently launched two episodes. So if there are any university students <laughs> listening, and if you are interested in being an international student, there's a very interesting video called, you know, University life experience with <clears throat> sorry international students so there are actually some other students who are from jamaica who are here who are my residents and i pull them together to do a video to talk about their experience you know leaving home a lot of their friends are doing school virtually but they decided to come to campus and for that in-person experience and let me tell you when i myself decided to come to school in person a lot of people thought that was crazy <laughs> um yeah, so I if, bet. yeah yeah if you're interested you can go ahead and watch that and and something i want to tell you know any student listening i know it's not always easy and sometimes even when you're trying and it's not being reflected it can feel like the world is on your shoulder because you feel like you're doing everything and it's just not working out just Take the time, pause, assess, and see you know, where can you get help. We're, we're not. We we all need, you know, help in this life to get to where we're going. We can't do it alone. You know, they always say no man is an island. And so, just take the time out. Sometimes you need to take a break. Now, don't quit. Just take a break. And 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 you're you're. Having a healthy mind is so important in keeping you pushing. And don't give up on yourself. And also don't rely on anyone to believe in you. It's cool when people believe in you, but it's most important when you believe in yourself and all that you can conquer. And don't limit yourself at all. <laughs> Oh my God! Love and uh, you, beat me, you beat me to the punch. So I always, if you listen to one of my podcast, always at the end, I always ask our guest what is one thing they would like to tell the audience, right? Because that is part of the why story why we do this. And you just beat me to the punch by giving exactly the takeaway you want to tell everybody else out there in the world. So what you're doing, you're setting in motion positive. Uh, uh, vibrations to the universe by saying that because people think there's a, a magical pill out there. And if there was, I'm quite sure people would be trillionaires, but there's not. The magical pill is within. The creativity is within. The happiness is within. The desire is within. So you just said exactly what people need to hear out there is that all experiences have value and that you are able and can conquer anything you want within even though it may not seem make sense now trust me it may not make sense but you'll be able to conquer it in time wow amazing thank you so much give you a hand of applause yeah on that. congratulations nia very very proud of you i am a big fan of you and um, <laughs> i'm very impressed and i really like what you're doing and i know that and ron knows that we see a very big potential and this is just the beginning for you and I know that you will make a huge difference in the world and and the, the youth, you're just starting. This is just a start for you. So I wish you luck. And again, congratulations on everything that you've accomplished in your life so far at such a young age. Um, good luck with school and in everything that you do there and in the future. So before we let you go... I just want to hear something from you. <laughs> I wasn't going to let you off. I was waiting for this moment too. Um, if you can say something in, in Jamaican to our <laughs> audience, I would love, and I'm sure our audience would love to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I find this funny? Because, you know, it's not the first time I've heard this. And I'm, I'm sure it's not. <laughs> On campus, people like to mock my language, like, you know, try to talk like me. It's so funny. But where do you say that? Do you have anything specific? Um, <laughs> I don't know, Ron, do you? 
Uh, I, I, I don't. I, I, okay, uh, I can say something really simple. And that is like, big up yourself. Which means, you know... Um, oh my gosh, how do I explain this? Big up yourself, meaning, you know, like, take care. You know, um, but just before I leave, what I want to add, and it just came to my mind, is finding balance. Finding balance. Mm -hmm. Because with Elevate With Me, and, and, and you recently mentioned, Gloria, about, you know, school. You said good luck with school. Mm -hmm. And finding balance is so important. Yes, it is. Whether it's with your schoolwork, whatever, you know, personal initiative you're starting, and also with your social life. You have to have some balance. Can't just do too much of one thing. You do. So find yeah. balance. So I'll say that in Jamaica is make sure you find balance. <laughs> no, okay, there you go. Say that in Jamaica. I would would love to hear that. Yeah, make sure you find balance. <laughs> How do you say that in Jamaican? That is Jamaican. <laughs> really? Yes. They don't speak different languages. Remember, language Jama English. remember Jamaica. When people say say in Jamaica, Jamaica. You know, it's what what we speak is called. Sometimes it's it's a dialect. It's called patwa. It's not yeah. Like, it's still do you speak a different dialect or? Right. So it's it's called the uh, it's called patwa. It's spelled patois, p a t o i s, but it's pronounced patwa. So you know, Jamaicans still speak English, but because because we we speak a dialect called um, patwa. Which is just, uh, it's English, but, you know, it's a little bit different. Um, and so a lot of the things, so that's why so many people are able to understand and, and try to, quote unquote, speak Jamaican, because it's not very far off from English. Got it. So that's why I said, make sure you balance, you know, it just means make sure you balance. Okay. And it's, it's. You can you can make it up because it's so close to English. Yeah, no, yeah, I get it. Someone asked me one time, you know, how did I learn English so fast? I'm like, what? I've, that's the only language I. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's what I grew up speaking. Yeah. But it's because a lot of a lot of people speak full on patwa, mm -hmm. and so when you meet some a Jamaican who speaks proper English, it's like, oh, you sound a little bit different. <laughs> so I've gotten that here. Um, they're so used to, you know, if if when people are portraying Jamaicans, they hear the patwa. But no, 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 we we it's just a it's just a dialect. Oh, okay. I, love that. Got it. I just okay. learned something new today. Yeah, something brand new, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So find your balance. It's not another language. Yeah. Thank you. Find your balance and time management, right? <clears throat> yeah. That's important for students. You know, oh heck, yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say thanks again, Nia. It's been a pleasure hearing your story. Um, we'll definitely like to have you again one day to see your progression forward on Life's Shuffle Podcast. And for our audience members, if you want to hear Nia's story, if you're ready in a couple of days, you can download it, listen to it around the world. Also, I'll, pu I'll publish it on YouTube and also Instagram. But if you want to follow our story on a continuous basis um, and guests, go to Facebook at lifesashuffle.com. Click the uh, follow button on the group. At the same time, make a comment, ask a question. You could be interviewed as a as a not host as a guest here, and we can hear your story, or I can say a comment online, answer it with a guest, because obviously every comment has value, and we're here to present value. So, thanks for listening. This is Ronald Johnson, your mindfulness coach, and it was a pleasure to have you here again. Yes. Thank you again, Gloria and Ron, for having me. Thank you, Nia, again um, for um, yeah coming on and sharing your story to our audience. And again, this is Gloria. And thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. <laughs>